All right, we're going to get started with our post-race media availabilities for today's NOCO 400 at Martinsville Speedway. We are joined by members of the race-winning team, which was the number 500cars.com Chevrolet. We have the crew chief, Cliff Daniels, and we have Hendrick, president and general manager, Jeff Andrews. We will go straight to questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start with Justin. Justin Schuler kicking the tires. Cliff, were you surprised that those two and no tires held up against all those fours? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the the especially the SHR cars were really fast all day long. Um, to be honest, earlier in the race, when a couple guys stayed out on older tires and like survived for 20 to 30 laps, which was 20 to 30 laps longer than I thought they would have, that was kind of a tell sign. Um, a couple data points last year of guys on you know higher lap tires still maintaining track position. So still a little bit of a gamble, but we knew there were some data points where it had worked. So that's that's the way we went. Additional questions? And we'll go to Dustin in the front there. And then we'll go to Mark. D Dustin Long, NBC Sports, uh, one for each. Um, Cliff, based off of what you're talking about and what we saw today, as a crew chief, are you having to think a little bit differently because of track position and it's more about you helping your driver pass as opposed to your driver in many cases being able to gain positions? I would say a healthy combination of both. Um, I'll be the first to admit for 200 laps we weren't a winning car. You know, our, our car just wasn't great. Um, some of that was what was in her car and some of that was kind of the track conditions. So then we, at the same time, we got a couple of good changes in our car. The track did cool off a little bit, and I, I think all that kind of came our way. Uh, so then to your exact question, yes, I, I, I think, um, you know, being able to be more aggressive on the strategy side, get some spots on pit road or, or spots on what your strategy is, certainly are, that's, that's helpful. And, and every time we did it, we were able to kind of maintain. Uh, but you still saw some cars that were really good cars that could pass up to the field, and, and we weren't one of those cars for 200 laps. It wasn't until later in the race that we got our car better. So both kind of worked out at the end. And for Jeff, um, based, you know, with, with your extensive experience and knowledge of engines, the discussion comes up again after the race, hey, more horsepower is needed for these cars in a different tire. Um, that sounds like a simple solution is just give it more horsepower. From an engine perspective, I'm not an engine guy, so how, how difficult is that? What you know, how prohibitive is the cost of that? I mean, is that something that if people wanted to get enough people wanted to get done, that that's something that's realistically could be done? Or is this like trying to climb Everest in getting back to the level of, of horsepower it used to be? Yes, Dustin, I think, um, you know, multi answers to that question. First, yeah, it's always achievable. Um, it takes quite a bit of work um, to get back there. You know, we are, um, I would say, five to six months out on you know, parts orders and deliveries. And, and really when you get to this part of the season, you start to consume a lot of sealed engines that you run earlier in the season. So it gets complicated just, just to try to change, you know, a package over or change a power level over because these engines are built and tuned and all the analysis and everything that's run on them is for the current power level. So when you start to make changes to that, it requires changes to a lot of parts and pieces, and, and some of those would be as much as, you know, a year to possibly 18 months lead time to get that work done and get parts ordered. So it's it's a complicated question. I I personally do not disagree with you that, that you know, more power would, you know, be something that, that uh, to take a look at someday. It, it's just, it's a long-term decision for the engine companies to, to do that. And to, so to follow up, so it sounds like even if people wanted to do it at, for 2024, it's almost too late. At this we, point. That decision needs to be made now. Yeah, very, very soon. Because parts, um, depending on the parts and pieces, you know, some things, as I said, are, are you know, easily six months to a year out from a planning perspective. And, and one thing that, you know, you need to realize is that all these engine companies have ordered parts and pieces for really the remainder of 2023 um, and, and to start to change that architecture around it's it, it gets very very complicated very quickly and uh, that's a long-term decision for sure Thanks. go to Mark Mark Garrow with PRN Jeff 295 wins now for Hendrick Motorsports pretty big number uh, <laughs> 
you guys are closing in on 300. Any thought on that? Any whispering about that might be an attainable number this year? Uh, I think it, uh, Mark, it was more than a whisper at our season kickoff luncheon for Mr. Hendrick. It was uh, an, an ask of his, and uh, he lit that fire underneath of everybody very early on in January, and, and we're certainly marching forward towards that. So um, obviously a goal we want to achieve, and, and uh, you know, in addition to that, keep going right on past that. Um, we need to focus on uh, – on long term on late summer and early fall and, and having performance in our cars like we do now at that point of the season. Certainly, uh, I know as a company, we're very pleased with, with how this package has performed you know, for us. Um, Phoenix, uh, Richmond, uh, now here, certainly as Cliff said, we weren't in the best shape and we still got some work to do here as a company to, uh, to have some more consistency across all our cars. But uh, certainly a good, good uh, start for us for, for 2023. And, and yes, 300 is uh, something we're after for Mr. Hendrick, first and foremost. Uh, but that championship in Phoenix at the end of the year is, is another big one we've got our sights set on. Thank you. I'm going to go up front to Alex, and then we'll go to Zach, and then Bob. Alex Zetlow, um, Charlotte Observer. Uh, if both of you can answer this question, what struck you most about Kyle's performance today? I think just the, the fact that all the conversations he and I have had here, he's had so much doubt in himself, but we've continued to stay true to our process, how we prepare, the data we look at, everything that we study. Um, he's been very open to any adjustments he's needed to make on his end. And it's kind of a, a two-way conversation from what can he do better and different and what can we do better and different with the car. Uh, that, that really, I would say that the work you know, behind the scenes, the work in preparation to get here today is what I'm most proud of because you saw at the end of the race when, uh, when our car was good and, and uh, he knew he had a shot. He did a great job to, to go through some of those guys, get to Joey, have a clean, clean you know, for the most part, race for the, for the win. And uh, lay down some really good laps to, to finish out the day. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, certainly echoes, uh, echo Cliff's comments there. Um, you know, I, I think the thing for me is just how Cliff and, and Kyle really put the whole day together. Certainly various phases of that race and, and track change with, you know, clouds and sun and, and uh, then, you know, an untimely caution there. Uh, certainly through a twist in everybody's strategy, but really just from start to finish how they work together on the radio and, and continue to make the car better um, really all day long. Um, various things for various teams, including our own that, uh, you know, kind of came and went uh, during the day. It was certainly key to keep track position, uh, as you saw with a lot of cars that, uh, you know, kind of went from the front to the back and back to the front. And uh, so I just uh, commend them, both of them, on how they kept their head in the game all day long and, and raced the track the entire day and stayed in it all day long. I'm going to go in the back to Zach, and then we'll come up front to Bob. Zach Sterniel would not. Uh, the number five car hasn't won here since 84 uh, when Jeff Bodine went to victory lane. The significance of that number to get that uh, car back in Martinsville victory lane, what, what does that mean to Hendrick Motorsports? Yeah, that certainly is a great uh, milestone. I'm not sure that I realized that. Did you? I didn't know that <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, obviously being uh, the side of the first win for Hendrick Motorsports back in 1984, and then uh, you know to come here in day and put number five back in victory lane. That's always a special number. It has been for Mr. Hendrick through the years. A lot of great milestones that go with that uh, number, and a lot of history and heritage there. So um, you know, for us as a company. Very proud of that, and uh, to bring that to Mr. Hendrick as well back here at Martinsville. Go to Bob. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Uh, Jeff, uh, I, I assume there, is, there wasn't much doubt on whether Chase can win or come back and be strong, but did, to, what, did today send any sort of message you feel to him and the team? Yeah, I think if you saw him after the race, just the fight that's in Chase Elliott, you know, he's, um, you know, obviously that was a tough race on him, tough, tough race on any driver and, and uh, you know, to come here after being out for multiple weeks. And, um, you know, as, as I said earlier, we didn't have the best race cars today and, and he and Alan fought all day long together. Um, Chase stayed obviously with Alan and the team and, and worked hard all day long and, you uh, at the end there, that, that thing came to life and, and see him battle his way back up there uh, to a top 10. It's just, it's great to have him back. It's, uh, you know, from that aspo aspect, it's the first weekend for us to uh, 
to kind of have our team or have the band, so to speak, put back together. We haven't all been back together since uh, uh, Fontana for, for various reasons. So um, I, I think just, just a statement for the company and a, and a compliment to the men and the women behind the scenes at Hendrick Motorsports that have been building and working on these race cars through this uh, you know time of adversity for us and, and to come here today and uh, not only with Chase but uh, Cliff and um, – you know, Kyle, it's just it's 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 a good day for us, and uh, you know we'll build on it. Certainly glad to you know back to your question to have Chase back. I think he he fought all day long and did a great job for us. Want to check in up at the press box to see if there are any questions for Cliff or Jeff? Do we have any questions remaining down here in the media center? We'll go back to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, you've won almost half the races this year as an organization. Do you feel like a dominant, dominant that you're the dominant team? Um, I wouldn't consider us dominant. I don't think there's anybody at uh, Hendrick Motorsports right now that has that comfort level or, you know, that feeling. Is as I said I, a little bit earlier. Um, you know, we need to run and perform like this in in the latter half of the summer early part of the fall that that's when it really starts to count and yes stacking up the wins right now and the points and the playoff points that's very important to have those who go into the fall but we've got a lot of work to do we have to come back here this is a very very critical stop for us as, as you all know in the fall uh, on the way to Phoenix and uh, we have to certainly be a lot better than than we were here um, today we, we pulled it all together there at the end and and had some competitive cars and were able to win the race. Um, but we need to be better as an organization coming back here. So um, we won't uh, take too much confidence out of here and uh, we'll go on to Talladega next week and uh, approach that and attack that for what it's worth. But, but we certainly need to put some focus on Martinsville for the fall. And one other thing sorry. is you guys have won all the key races. Phoenix, you've won host of the championship. You win at Martinsville. Uh, the next to last race, you went at Vegas, a key race in, in the last round. Um, it, was there an emphasis? I know at Hendrick it's all about winning, but was there any additional emphasis on either of these tracks? And what and how, because there's such a long gap between now and when those track you come back to these tracks, had you know the challenge of maintaining that strength so you can take advantage of those opportunities later for either of you? Yeah, I mean, we certainly. Um, <clears throat> Everyone in the whole cup field has Phoenix circled, you know, obviously, right? And and we, as a company, didn't perform as well as we needed to in the fall. Um, we, we certainly got beat by at least two organizations that I can think of just outright. Um, forget strategy, forget anything else. They just had better and faster cars than we did. So, um, yes, we did circle Phoenix specifically over the winter. Um, and, and we kind of assembled a group back at the shop to help us attack some of these tracks in specific areas that we knew we were deficient. So big shout out and credit to, to those guys uh, back at the shop, those guys and gals. And uh, yeah, kind of the way you described it for each one of these races, we've had a similar approach. Um, Vegas last fall, all of our cars didn't run great. Um, and, and obviously I spoke on Phoenix. Here has been kind of hit or miss for us. And, and it was kind of that way today too, you know, kind of hit or miss from what you saw. Um, so we, we, we've identified all those races, the, the, you know, keystones that they are to your point for the playoffs and uh, try, try to make an effort for what those are. And, and then the things that can carry over, um, you know, between Phoenix and Richmond, you carry a little bit of that to Nashville and Gateway and stuff like that in the summertime. Um, no, it's not the exact same, but, you know, the general concepts you can take and kind of keep working on and building on. Uh, so, so that's what's gotten us to this point, but certainly a lot of work ahead of us. All right, gentlemen, congratulations on the win today. We'll see you next week in Talladega.